All right. Well, welcome to our season finale of Two Nerds with Career Advice. So this is our final vlogcast recording before uh, the summer. So uh, yeah. we will we will it's return very, in the fall. It's very sad. It's our last one. I know, but it's uh, you know who's really sad is uh, the six and a half people that are listening to this right now. We they apologize to those six sad. people. We're so, and it's six and a half actually. <laughs> so we will. Don't you cry. We will be back in the fall, and you know how to reach us if you need any help with anything over the summer. So we, we're still here. So that's we're a good still point. Here, we're still here, rocking and rolling. Yes. So we'll uh, be here in the summer too. I just wanted to make sure I said that. Oh, you're still collecting a paycheck this summer. I think I am. Oh, I I was given the boot from payroll. They said I'm. I'm not working this summer. Oh, well then, never mind. I'm just kidding. The cat needs to eat. <laughs> so what do we have in store for our series finale today, Jeff? Oh, this is going to be a very good topic to end on, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So this, we have some. So I think we're each going to, to give one more piece of advice to our job seekers. And actually, uh, this is going to be good advice for people who have jobs as well, yeah. which I think will be different than what we've done so far. Yeah. And so we got this idea from an amazing article that, um, you know, Jeff is a researcher at heart. And I'm not saying that sarcastically. And Jeff was doing his research this week and found an amazing article um, by Lonnie Rosales in the American Genius, which is an entrepreneur's publication. And Jeff uh, wanted to use this uh some substance from this article to use as a catalyst for uh, giving us your big pieces, our last big pieces of, of advice before you take on uh, looking for jobs or even internships for uh, this crazy time period during uh, COVID-19. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think the information that we're, we're going to pull from this article and kind of make it our own is going to be very beneficial, I think, to job seekers and those who have jobs and internships yeah. as well. Yeah, so um, I guess I'll start. And I, you know, one of the things, the flashpoints in this article that really uh, stood out to me is uh, you, you cannot oversaturate the job market with applications. You just, it's not a good idea when I have students that come to me and they're like, I've applied to over 150 or 200 companies and I have not received one interview yet. And well, that's essentially the problem is that you are now thinning yourself out and you are putting in way too many applications uh, all over the place instead of being laser light focused on a particular industry and a particular company. So how do we work around that? Well, I say that, you know, if you are interested in a particular field, industry, or even company, focus on that specific area. Like, do your research. Focus on that one, two, or three companies that you really would like to join and come up with some uh, reasons why you want to join that company. What is it that they do for their consumers, their customers, their client base? What is it that they specialize in? What is their culture like? And look, if you don't really know this, but it's it sounds like a sexy company or it's in an area you really want to work in, then that's the opportunity for you to look them up on LinkedIn, see what their mission statement is about, and even yes, check and ch uh, check to see what employees work there using LinkedIn, so that way you can uh, connect with them and uh, conduct some informational interviews and try to figure out what is it that you like most about working at that company? You know, what is the culture like there? What is something, um, you know, there that you really like that I can't find on the internet or that sort of thing? And so when you start actually researching and figuring out how they impact uh, society or how they impact um, a market or a client, that's when you're really going to try to find an inspiration for for applying to that particular organization and job. Yeah, that's that's such a great piece of advice to give to job seekers. Um, and I, I loved when you started about applying to 100, 150 companies. We hear that all the time. Yeah. So once again, tailoring your materials to the specific job or internship that you're going for is so important. And it makes you stand out from those who don't do that. Yeah. And employers can, can clearly see who's doing it and who isn't. 
Yeah, especially in your cover letter. Like, that's your pitch to the recruiter. Not not to regurgitate your resume in an area right. format and a letter, but to really persuade your audience as to this is why I am applying to your company at this time. This is how I see myself making an impact. And when you actually go that extra mile to uh, explicate that in a cover letter, they're going to notice that and they're going to be more likely to pull you in for an interview than just the, the person who used a cookie cutter template or clearly did not demonstrate that they've done their research on the company and the organization. Yeah, that's great. And, and like we said, it makes a difference. Yeah. It really does. And it makes yeah. you stand out. Yeah, you got right. the time. Right. <laughs> right like if you're if you're wrapping up classes this week and you you're you know like instead of just blindly applying to like 150 companies and roles laser light focus on specific companies that you really could see yourself profoundly being attracted to yeah yeah love it yeah thank you okay so that was great so that's that's the last piece of advice from mr christopher perello for the uh, spring semester um, and I'm going to switch gears a little bit, actually, and um, I'm going to talk to those students who have managed to get a job or an internship. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about something that I actually um, talk about in my class, um, IST 335, and it's something called expert power. So I don't know if you've ever heard that term before, but expert power means that you gain power in the organization by the fact that you are an expert in something in that organization. So you kind of make yourself very valuable because of the knowledge that you have or the knowledge that you're getting. And this is why we keep saying throughout um, all of these blog casts of how important it is to continually increase your skills because you're looking for those things that aren't necessarily hot now but things that are going to be hot now and in the future mm -hmm. because it makes you more valuable as an employee and it gives you this this um, power, if you will. It gives you a lot of say in what goes on in the organization and people start coming to you as a resource. And that's the idea. That's what you want. So I'm encouraging all those students who have jobs and internships, make sure that you look through the organization and look for those areas where you see holes, where you see that there's not a lot of, lot of knowledge in that area, and you seek to fulfill that hole. You seek to get that knowledge in that particular area, and that makes you so much more valuable. For you um, students that have internships, this is a great way for you to shine and really show the organization the value that you have. So at the end of that internship, there's no way that that company can do without you because you're the only one that has that knowledge. And for you job seekers or the um, students who have jobs, this is a great way for you to move up in the organization very quickly. When you start showing your worth and you start showing that, hey, you have a lot more to offer than just what you came in with or what they assume that you came in with and you have a lot more skills um, that you're highlighting when you start doing things and going that extra mile and maybe doing another report or doing another visual or doing something cool with the data that they didn't even ask for. This is a way for you to show your skills and to show that, hey, I'm a I'm a valuable resource in this organization. So I'm going to encourage all of you to utilize this term of expert power find holes in the organization where you know this is a way for you to kind of reach in and and uh, and get that extra knowledge or experience and utilize that to propel yourself either into a job if you have an internship or get a promotion um, for those that are starting. The other thing is that goes along with this is especially with those that are working online um, and working from home, a lot of people are going to do really well at that and some people are not going to do well at that. Yeah. So those that are not doing well are those that are unfortunately going to be the ones that are not going to be around long in the organization. So you need to utilize resources, people in the organization, start figuring out where, once again, it, it doesn't just have to be a technology. It could be an actual position where someone is, is just 
for whatever reason, not doing well in the, in the home environment that you can start working your way into and, you know, backfilling that position already. So some things to think about while you're working this summer or while you start working in your full-time job. Well, that's amazing. Wow. That's, uh, it's, I think the best tip to get, I'm not trying to, you know, really give Jeff all the expert power here, (laughs) but no, that's a great tip to end this uh, podcast or vlogcast, excuse me, with, because you're really seeping into other areas of career and professional development, negotiation strategy, right? How to leverage those extra supplemental skills that you're becoming an expert in, right? The fact that now you know how to work virtually, which it was a struggle for me too. I mean, I'm, I think I've, I've gotten used to it now and I kind of like it, but um, that makes you now more uh, flexible as an employee, right? And so that's going to give you more uh, influence and impact in the organization. And it's going to uh, allow you to leverage uh, those skills in a way that you you wouldn't be able to anywhere else. And believe me, when you start utilizing some of those skills and knowledge that you have, you become very visible and people notice very quickly. So, I mean, you're crazy not to not to utilize all the resources that you have to offer. Yeah. Like this vlogcast. Yes. So uh, thank you, Jeff. That was great. I just want to um, before we sign off, I want to remind any iSchool student out there who has received or accepted an internship or job whether um, the internship is paid or unpaid or whatever, um, that doesn't matter. But we want to hear from you and we want to celebrate. So uh, we're doing our iSchool Signing Day virtual this year, thanks to Jeff's um, creative recommendations, by the way. Thank you. Um, And so if you you want to celebrate and share your full-time job offer or your internship with us, please uh, send us a, a very brief video, a polished, crisp video of yourself um, with just a few seconds and words of appreciation to tell us where you're going, what you're going to be doing and where. Maybe show off some of the company logo or swag in your video. And Jeff, what can our students do in case they don't have access to video recording? Yeah, it doesn't just have to be a video. You can just simply take a picture of yourself um with some kind of um you know swag from the company that you're going to be working or interning for and then just give a brief bio on what it is that you're going to be doing for that organization and we'll make sure that we get that information out we're going to compile it all and we'll get that information out to everybody via social media so that you'll be able to see yourself and your friends and be able to see where everybody's going or what they're doing this summer or for their job or career yeah Except so, we don't have the taco bar this year. I know. No I'm taco so bar and no t-shirts. But next year. Next yes, year. For yes. sure. And you guys can come back too and still enjoy the taco bar. Yeah, taco Absolutely. Bar. Taco we'll have to do it great. on a Tuesday next year. So that way it coincides with Taco Tuesday. Love it. Great idea. So uh, that was the season finale of Two Nerds with Career Advice. And until uh, September... We will see you then. Thank you, Jeff. You got and, it. And uh, thank you to Coco, our special guest who would who would uh, waddle into the Jeff's living room every once in a while. <laughs> Have a great summer, everyone. Wait, let me see if I can do this. Oh. Here's my partner in crime. Aw, Coco, you're sleeping. She's oh, she working can't. very hard. She can't hear me. Wow. She's well, she, becoming... knew, she knew I was doing a, vol- a blog cast. So. Oh, she doesn't want any part of that. She's becoming an expert in sleeping, I see. <laughs> I think she's gained the COVID-15 as well. Hey, better her than me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, man, this was a blast. This was a really good idea that you had. So thank you for including me on this. Hey, thank you for bringing some of the... Um, the influence and the advice and, and being a great co-host. Yeah, I look. I really look forward to doing this again in the fall. And yeah. I hope that everybody does too. Until then, we will see you in the fall.